Thank you. Um, this is actually the first time we're ever going to present uh, Canary publicly. Um, we've done a $8 million Series uh, uh, Founders Round, which was all done internally. We've done a $26 million Series A, and we've raised about another $22 million non-dilutively through corporate partnerships. But uh, so we've been working at it for a while. Um, for the first time in my career, we can actually tell the whole story in one slide. Um, we live in a world where our doorbell is connected to the internet, our refrigerator is connected to the internet, so how come life-saving medical devices are not connected to the internet? Um, turns out it's not a technology problem, it's just an assembly problem. So we use a variety of technologies that already exist. So we started in orthopedics for a bunch of technical reasons, mostly because we had the space, um, but we use a sensor array that was actually developed by the military for military drones, so it has 3D acceler accelerometers, 3D gyroscopes. Um, obviously those uh, drones know exquisitely where they are in three space, and orthopedics is all about movement. So that's the sensor package that we use. We couple it to a pacemaker battery um, that's been used for you know, literally tens of years, and then we use telemetry uh, to get the signal out of the body, the same type of things that are done in pacemakers. The batteries are so good, the power draw is so low that we can do this for 20 years off of the one uh, battery, so there's nothing to wear, there's nothing to charge, there's nothing to forget. Once this goes in, the patient is transmitting pretty much for the rest of, of the lifespan of their device. Um, we are partnered with the world's biggest orthopedic company. We will be going into um, you know, probably the best selling joint in the world. Uh, we are a de novo 510K uh, from the FDA. We have received breakthrough status for this. Uh, the same device will also go into uh, hips and shoulders, which are just a short bit behind, and this product should launch before the end of the year. I'm very proud of all that we've done, and yet probably the most important thing we ever did had nothing to do with us. Uh, CMS came out with remote patient monitoring codes that we think will be very important. I'll circle back to those. So we have kind of a dual revenue approach. We will be able to make money off of our implant, um, but we believe we will also be able to uh, get revenue uh, from providing data to the clinicians, and I'll spend a very short bit of time on that. So this is what it looks like as a system. The device is actually the tibial extension that goes into a, a standard knee. There's a base station that is in the patient's home. Yes, we can uh, work via the phone, but we actually choose not to. That just goes in the patient's bedroom. Uh, if the green light's on, it's connected to the internet. That's the extent of the patient's involvement. If it's not, we'll probably notice that within a few days and we'll send somebody over to connect it to the internet, but that's it. Every night, the patient goes to bed. This base station will download the data. Uh, it then goes to a secure cloud. We send one set of data to the, the patient, a different set of data to the clinician. To the patient, we send all the things that you would think about. Step count, stride length, cadence, you know, basic uh, range of motion, things that would tell them how they're doing and how they're rehabbing. Um, and to the clinician, we send something quite a bit more sophisticated, uh, which I will come back to. To those of you who have wearables or other digital devices, that whole back end um, actually costs 10, 15 million dollars to set up and it's probably not worth duplicating, so um, we provide those services for other people, uh, respiratory companies and others, uh, in terms of the data analytics and, and all the back end that does that. One other thing I will note um, for the medtech folks in the crowd, it, the loop actually goes in the other direction. So if you end up having a recall, we can obviously reach the patients because we barcode all the device components into the device. It carries it around for the rest of its life. And similarly, it's a very bizarre way of doing inventory management. Um, we know which devices just walked out of HSS that day. Um, and so your rep has a pretty good idea of you know, what's on the shelf and what's not. Um, as I mentioned, we did get breakthrough status, so we will get expedited review. Um, this is the first time a implantable device in orthopedics uh, has gotten that status, and it is the first time that um, this will have been done uh, outside of the cardiovascular space. What we measure initially is are things like step count, uh, range of motion, and actual gait. Obviously, not all steps are created equal, so um, step count's not enough. A person who's walking slowly and haltingly is very different than someone who has a long athletic stride. Clinically, if you went into your orthopedic surgeon, your physical exam postoperatively is walk up and down the hallway for me so I can see how you're walking and what's your range of motion. So that's what we provide. Um, the ability to do remotely, if you will, the, uh, the physical exam that the clinician does. Um, the wearable technology is fantastic. The only problem with wearables is that people don't wear them. 
um, human compliance is, is pretty consistent, and by the time you get to 90 days, less than 25% of people are still wearing um, the Fitbit or the iWatch or whatever you gave them. And if you want to follow patients for years and years, and remember we've got 20 years here, um, you know, compliance would quickly go to zero. So that's a big part of, of why we're internal and why we made it as idiot-proof as possible. These are the RPM codes that will really matter. The 453 code came out uh, January of last year. That allows the clinician to bill $19 um, to put a uh, person on remote patient monitoring, but the real important codes are the 454, which I call the collection code, and the 457, which is the delivery code. The 454 is if you monitor your patient a total of 16 days over a 30-day period. If you look at 20 minutes worth of data, um, one of your staff, it does not have to be the doc, but a healthcare provider, can bill uh, $62 a month for that. If you take the further step of providing guidance, so, hey, Mrs. Jones, looks like you're doing well, you're walking around, range of motion is good, unless you need to see me, I don't need to see you, you can bill another $51 for that. So that's about $114 a month. In the first year post-operatively, that would be about $1,400 in billing. To put that in perspective, CMS pays the surgeon $1,400 to do the surgery. So effectively, that doubles uh, the value of that patient. Most of our docs do between three and 400 uh, patients a year, so you're talking about three to four hundred thousand dollars per practice. We would spend, we would charge them four hundred dollars to collect all that data, process all that data, do all the analytics, send it to the patient, send it to them, uh, and then they would uh, get about a thousand dollars per patient back from that. So that's the second arm of the revenue stream, uh, and we think it's very lucrative to the practices of, of the patients that we work in. This is what it looks like. Um, I have some really gory cadaver videos, which I'll spare you from, um, but. What's fascinating about it is what we can do beyond that. So I'm not an engineer, I'm a biologist, but a physician. But the way it's been explained to me is this is a little bit like having a tuning fork inside your knee. So every time your heel hits the ground, it pings that tuning fork. And that turns out to be really, really important. You can imagine that when it first goes in, you're gonna have a fair bit of vibration um, because you haven't had healing yet. As that healing comes in, you're gonna get tighter and tighter incorporation, that pinging pattern's gonna change. And then as it starts to loosen or fail, or if it's infected, that pinging pattern is going to change. So we believe that we're going to be able, with fairly simple uh, analytics and, and machine learning, have kind of almost like a green light, yellow light, red light for physicians. You know, this patient is recovering along a trajectory that we expect, this is a patient you need to look at, or this is a patient that's showing signs of an early developing infection. Maybe this is somebody you wanna work up. We can also look at micromotion. So we can actually tell what direction uh, that micromotion or instability is in case that could be fixed with uh, you know, a brace or an orthotic or something like that. A Couple other things we're working on right now, we're working on a, a talking screw, if you will, um, to get us into spine uh, and into uh, trauma. Uh, this allows us to measure not only things like back out of the screw or breakage or alignment, but if you run a current across um, a evolving bone callus, you can actually see, uh, in quotation marks, how well that is healing. Uh, so you'll get an index of, of how the, uh, the bone is healing along that way. And I'm an old vascular guy. I was the Paclitaxel guy, for those of you who watched that a couple of seconds ago. Um, and so we really want to get into vascular. Uh, we're working on that. The nice thing about the vascular system is if you have pressure and you have flow, everything else is math. So you can determine cardiac output, ejection fraction, systemic vascular resistance. It's like having an ICU in you uh, while you're going around. Those of you who know the CardioMEMS technology, our first indication is going to be uh, in uh, AAA graft because obviously we want to be able to measure whether or not uh, the device is leaking. So that is the canary story. Um, we can take this technology to multiple devices across multiple uh, different indications. Um, we are potentially looking to do a fairly significant Series B for those who are uh, in the investment uh, arm, although we, we still do have about $20 million in cash on hand, uh, so we're um, in reasonably good financial shape. So thank you very much for your time, and it's been a pleasure presenting it to you. <laughs>